We decided we should come here because the Today programme covers a Brexit an awful lot, as you'd expect, but what we don't always do is go to places and try to identify what the issues are for people in situ, as it were, are actually dealing with them. And we've been recently to Northern Ireland, um, actually to both sides of the Irish border, to talk to people there and try to get an understanding of what the issues are in that hugely important part of the world. And we thought, well, hang on a second. <laughs> we ought to also not to forget Gibraltar, because it is so important. Um, uh, so we decided to come here. And we've talked to the chief minister, who's actually in London for talks, but that gives us a, an excuse to come and, and do it. But we talked to a range of people here. And just to hear voices, actually, talking about um, not just the politics, in a way, not just the immediate practical politics, but also the wider context of what it means to be a Gibraltarian, what it means to live here, how people here actually think about Spain, think about the European Union, just to give people in Britain a kind of wider sense of, of what the issues are. Well, tell us what you've learned about Gibraltarians. I, I, I tell you, in a sense, I've learned nothing that I didn't know before. So I've been here before and worked here before, back in the days when Peter Hayne was involved in talks over sovereignty. And I learned then very much what Gibraltarians thought of that and thought of the issue of sovereignty. And what's really interesting to me now coming back, actually, is that in a way nothing much underlying that has, has changed, has it? People feel very much the same as, as they do. Uh, it's interesting, and I think people in Britain will be interested, particularly in those we talked to, talked about the unique background that you have, um, uh, the, the kind of right across the Mediterranean background that a lot of people here have, the sense of yourselves, although you speak Spanish, that you're not Spanish. And all of, all of that, you know, wasn't frankly a great surprise to me, but I think it's, it's, it's important to reintroduce into the debate in Britain so that people in Britain have a sense of where the Gibraltarians are coming from. And you get that from your chief minister, of course, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's interesting as well to hear, not just from politicians, but from real people, as it were, who, who uh, about what they think of the issues surrounding um, Brexit and the issues surrounding sovereignty and surrounding Spain. I'm going to give you an example. It was very telling. We um, heard from one guy who I said to him, look, come on, Spain is a, is a democracy. It's uh, a member of the European Union, all the rest of it. Um, what, what, why are you so worried about it in the future? And he, you know, he talked about Catalonia and he talked about Spain being a very young democracy and that kind of sense that a lot of people have in Gibraltar that actually Spain isn't quite as sort of stable and sorted as a lot of us in Britain, I think, sort of as, assume it to be. So it's that difference of perspective that we were after and that was fascinating. Is Gibraltar one of the forgotten topics? I mean, do you think it's getting enough debate? Do you think people in the UK understand or even care about the situation here? Care, I think they do when, they, when it's presented to them. Uh, I think they'll be interested, and uh, particularly the people who listen to our programme who are interested in, in world affairs and, and wider affairs than their own backyard. That's why they listen. Uh, so uh, I, I don't think it would be true to say they don't care. Um, I think there's probably not a huge amount of knowledge of what's going on in Gibraltar, and that's an interesting thing, because Gibraltar itself, of course, has changed. Even in the years since I was here with Peter Hayne, um, that the economy has changed. There's an awful lot of, I mean, we can hear building work in the background. There's an awful lot going on here, um, and fintech, and the whole kind of sense of the importance of, of the new industries, financial industries, and, and the importance of those for the rock. So all, all of that side of it, I think, would be interesting to, to British people, and they probably wouldn't have known an awful lot about. In terms of the, of the politics of Brexit, I think we focus a lot on the Northern Ireland border, and rightly so. But I think um, it, it's good to remind people, at least, that there is an issue about Gibraltar and about Spain's right of veto, as it seems, um, over a final deal and the potential that they might use that right of veto to ask for something. There's not clear, I think, at the moment what that thing might be. And it certainly wasn't made clear during the point the course of the program by anyone what it might be but that kind of sense it's good to remind people that that is there in the background so yeah I mean knowledge I think there'll be more interest after uh, today uh, I, I certainly think people in Britain care and have an interest in Gibraltar but it's not going to be the kind of uh, unanimous or semi-unanimous view that you have here about things there's going to be a range of opinion in Britain.
I want to ask you about Peter Hain because the issue of joint management of the airport has come up again and uh, we know what side he's on uh, as far as uh, joint yeah. sovereignty he and, and that. Program again. When I talked to him, he, he, he said, yeah, think about the airport. Is he a Lone Ranger or do others support his view over there? Uh, I, I, there are certainly others who have high knowledge of it who support his view. Uh, and quite a few others. We talked to Lord West, um, uh, former admiral um, and uh, defence minister, actually, under Labour, who's very keen that nothing at all changes in Gibraltar for strategic reasons, and he doesn't want to see any kind of fiddling around with sovereignty in the airport, the port, or, or anything. So you, you, you have a range of views of it in Britain. And it's quite interesting, actually. I, I, I suspect that to a lot of Brits, this is where there, there might be a division between them and Gibraltarians, because I think Gibraltarians will see that whole airport thing as being the thin end of a wedge. And I think for some people in Britain, uh, actually, they might think it wouldn't be, and that actually Gibraltar should think about joint sovereignty issues, and, and there is a sort of way of working with Spain. However anathema that is to, uh, I was going to say most Gibraltarians, almost all Gibraltarians, uh, I, I think that probably is a, a more widely held view in Britain. But, you know, I've never seen any polling about, about opinions on Gibraltar, and I'd, I'd be loath to say exactly what the, the balance of opinion was. I just sense that for, for Brits, um, the idea of joint sovereignty, well, it's a kind of cosy-sounding thing, isn't it? It might not be as, as frightening as it is to a lot of people here. Um, if it ever comes down to it that the UK is held to ransom, let's say, as far as a deal, a good Brexit deal is concerned, but there is the question of Gibraltar, do you think Gibraltar, to put it bluntly, would be thrown under a bus? Well, that is what Sir Vince Cable, the uh, leader of the Liberal Democrats, uh, told us this morning. He thinks it's already happening, actually. He thinks that the British government, uh, as he put it, is being very, very weak in its negotiations with the EU and its negotiations with Spain, specifically on Gibraltar. He wants a much tougher line early on. And his suspicion, I assume, is that down the line, exactly as you say, if there's a deal to be done, then to some extent Gibraltar will be pressured. On the other hand, uh, your chief minister told us that that wouldn't happen, and effectively he had a veto, actually, and, and that the British government, he, he, he said to me, you know, unless they're lying to me, um, I trust them. And he said he no reason to think that they're lying to him. So uh, who's right? Uh, when push comes to shove, uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Politics is a rum old business. You never quite know until things are completely firmed up what is going to happen and what seems suddenly to be acceptable that wasn't acceptable before. So it is one of those really interesting issues and, and, and the kind of central issue, exactly as you put it, that if there is eventually a deal to be done and this place is the one thing stopping it, then what would happen to this place? I, I do, I would caution though with this, there is plenty else that is also getting in the way. And I suspect that by the time we got that far, if we do get that far, then maybe the mood will have changed and actually nobody will want to, to veto. But yeah, it is, it is the central question. And frankly, it's the unanswerable question at the moment. just want to ask you to compare your trip to Northern Ireland with your trip to Gibraltar. I mean, are, are they as, about as passionate about you know, getting the right deal a, a, as we are? Well, I used to live in Northern Ireland. My first job in the BBC was in Northern Ireland, and, and I enormously liked living there. And I grew to have an enormous um, liking for, for, for people there and for an appreciation, actually, of the, their sense of themselves and of their separateness, both nationalists who felt very much that they're part of Ireland and also unionists who felt very much they're part of, of Britain. And, and the... the they wanted Britain to be more knowledgeable about their circumstances, more interested, more involved. And, you know, when I lived in Northern Ireland in the 1980s, in the early 1980s, we, we weren't desperately involved. We just wanted it to, to, to go away. And then, of course, we did become more involved and, and gradually in things that, that led to uh, the, the peace process there. And I mean, I suppose the interesting the, the thing that you share, in a sense, with, with them is, is the need to have people away from here involved and knowledgeable about here, and that frankly is, you know, part of why why we've come. We can't, uh, and we're not in the business of suggesting to people how they should think, but we are in the business of kind of airing arguments. And I think it's really important, as with Northern Ireland as well, arguments need to be aired, positions need to be 
uh, tested, um, and only then can you come to any kind of sort of final final agreement.